Tom here from Modern Systems, and we're going to talk about deploying projects like this one that's behind me right here. This is a uh, Unify kit we're setting up for a customer, and I'm doing this a little different. Uh, I'm doing it for my phone in case you're wondering why the video is a little different, and uh, so and it's hard to get the whole camera studio and moving around thing to explain this part of the project. If you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to LearnSystems.com. There's a Hire Us button up at the top. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there's some links down below, affiliate links for deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And we do talk a lot about Unify. And obviously, there's a lot of Unifies over here, as you can see, and a couple neck gates buried in them. And that's what I wanted to talk about. So let's start by looking at the project a little bit up close and kind of walk you through what it looks like. Because, I mean, I talk a lot about theoretical um, but seeing as they took over my studio and I can't really use it and the reason they took over my studio and let me show you here is because the story area is also all of these are projects that are getting set up, delivered and shipped. People ship stuff to us. We set it up, configure it, ship it out or we buy it online, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how this project goes. So what we have here is these two laptops and why is there two laptops and why is this happening right here? What you're seeing is the guys in the back remote controlling each of these laptops well actually one person i think probably kyle's using both of them right now remotely what he's doing is uh each one of these is on a separate network so this goes to one location this goes to another location and this is one for our lab this is a pf sense i'm going to draw this out in a diagram in a second here so what these all are is pre-labeled and this is a rip and replace we're replacing existing wi-fi these names on here and tags and they all match inside of each one side here with the Unify controller are all pre-labeled and ready for deployment. So when this client pulls down their old equipment and puts it back up, this is what goes in its place. Now, what we do is these two are for this side of the network and the cloud key, which is kind of buried under here. And this switch is for this side of the network. So each one of these is going in a different location. They are already VPN together. And this is facilitating it by actually giving the client's public IP addresses to these with the gateway. And we'll cover how we do that in a minute. This way, when they actually go to production, the VPN is all set up, everything's tied together. Now we adopted all of them together and make sure that after the adoption, they work with one controller via the VPN. So all of this stays within their controller. So this whole deployment will be exactly as planned. And each name given, like I said, is already goes to an existing Wi-Fi place that's going to get swapped. So that's how all of this looks. I know it's really messy and I've had some people like, well, should you do it a little bit neater? Should you rack mount it all before? And I'm like, it's just a lot of work to do it that way. Um, this is all just for testing and they have their own wires and rack and everything for when it actually goes in and gets deployed. So let's take a look and diagram and talk a little bit about more of the details in this. So let's dive into the finer details of this project. We have the PFSense lab as WAN 192.168.3.152. And these are not the client's IPs. These are ones I pulled out of the public IP space uh, unrelated to this project other than I just wanted to show uh, public IPs on here. So Office 1 is 40.764.9. That's going to be the gateway. And then Office 2, 18.25. 130.73. Now, what you do is you sign the actual gateways of the client. That way, when we do this, we're doing it all with the client's public IPs. And the whole goal of this is to minimize downtime. So these are pre-configured, already have an IPsec VPN with the client's public IP addresses statically assigned, the VPN set up and tested. That's actually one of the first steps we do. And real quick, you'll see that the WAN is going to be 4076.4.10 and 1825-130-74. Now, how does that actually look in PFSense? This is our lab PFSense. And what we did was we assigned Office 1, 40.76.4.9, Office 2, 1825-130-73. Nothing real special you have to do here. You just go in and assign the gateway address to, in this case, the lab PFSense. We make it a slash 29 because that is what they have. And the same thing goes again on the other side. Then we statically assign the WAN addresses on the XG7100s. Our lab one happens to be an SG5100, uh, if you notice that in the video. So Office 1, Office 2, really straightforward. Then we go over here to Firewall, Rules, and you want the rules to be wide open because they're supposed to be public IP addresses, and you can kind of get the idea. Now, 
Office 1, Office 2, you can see there was a lot of data being pushed across here. You just leave the rules wide open. This also affords you the opportunity to do some traffic tracing if you're stuck and having problems. This is another advantage of using a PFSense in the lab um, as the head end of this because, well, I can just run any of the diagnostics and look at the state tables, et cetera, and see any traffic going across if I'm having trouble troubleshooting the VPNs and I want to get you know really into the data. But it doesn't require any switches in between. We have directly plugged in each one of these to the different ports on here. So this is going to be port IX2, and I believe the other one is port IX3. So we just plugged these directly into the two XG7100s. Going further down, we copied the LAN settings, which is easy enough from the existing equipment the client had. And like I said, once we rip and replace all this, the only thing we have to do is just drop it in. Well, already thing had to be done because I'm in this is past tense now. We'll just drop these in and just turn them on and work. Because once we have the VPNs established, the LANs established, then we started adding the Unify switches, and then we added the Unified Gen 2 cloud key, kind of all at once, I should say. Then you start adopting everything together. Now, we did this site first. We did Office 1 first, and then we did Office 2. The reason we did it this way was we wanted to make sure we could adopt the devices on this side of the network. That way, if in the future they added more, we would know that the adoption process worked, but you just have to change the set and form URL to match the Gen 2 cloud key, and it will adopt across the IPsec VPN. No big deal to do that. And you want to make sure that you can push firmware back and forth, that there's no weird issues that you run into or hiccups. And by building this all out and plugging all the devices in prior to delivery, all the AC pros in and all the AC pros in on both sides and doing the full adoption and then leaving it up and running for a couple of days, we can now see the entire network working. The only thing you don't really have is a true load test because obviously they're going to have a lot more users and we can simulate easily connected to the Wi-Fi here in our office. But at least we've done so much of the legwork that when we do the swap and replace and you drop these in at the same time, I believe the client already deployed them and has them set up because um, this was a client deployed side, not a Lawrence Systems uh, one. We just did all the design and prep work. I believe they got these all plugged in. They haven't called us yet, so I'll assume it's all up and running. Um, we do a lot of these type of projects for clients where sometimes we're the installer, other times they're the installer. They'll go ahead and uh, put everything in and drop it in. Kind of varies from project to project, but it's going to get you an idea by doing all of this pre-planning, you can schedule, get one person at each site at the same time. So the downtime is absolutely minimum. Both people, one at each site, plugging, unplugging the old firewall equipment, taking everything down, plugging in the new firewall equipment, following the labels that we put on each thing and mounting them all and putting them all up there means the absolute minimum amount of downtime. So everything should just come up and start working. And it goes pretty well. So this is kind of like an overview of these projects. Like I said, we we do a lot more of them. I'm trying to, I want to show this little part of it because some people seem confused about how to assign those public IP addresses uh, when you're setting up a lab, but it's actually really, really easy to do. I mean, I'm doing a PFSense. Yes, you can probably do this with a handful of other devices as well. I know it works fine in PFSense though. Um, and obviously we use a lot of it. So that's one of the reasons it's, you know, what we, our choice of uh, in-house lab testing and lab building that is for building client projects. This is one of the reasons I think it's so important to have such a uh, an extensive lab set up is if you're not doing these deployments, you end up doing all this work onsite at the client. And if you run into a weird hiccup, a weird problem, um, and you didn't thoroughly test this, especially with the level of all the rules that need to be written and everything else, well, you can run into this problem. So the other advantage here is we can test all the rules ahead of time. We can test all the VPNs. And matter of fact, um, they actually have a few more networks I didn't list out here, um, a guest network and a couple others. And they wanted a some pretty unique settings. Well, not really unique, but just different settings more than basic in there. So we got a chance to test all those settings. We can test all the firewall rules because with your lab, you can actually go in through and do all the port checking and make sure it gets to anything behind there that they need to get to as well. So Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense and uh, helps you with your project planning as well. Or if you're looking to have a project like this planned out, this is something that we do, whether we're deploying it or in the case of uh, just being us the labor on the inside to do all the pre-deployment documentation and create this so people know how to set it up and plug it in. These are services that we do offer. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. 
If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.